Because I went to Zeus, too. I was on the baddies auditions. I was showing my titties, too. Oh, my God. They thought they was going to be showing their titties. <laughs> uh-uh. Oh I had this God. cougar up in there. And I made it to the last round with Black China Mom, with Natalie Nunn. I made it. I took my mic. I had one titty out. And I said, <laughs> oh, I'm the motherfucking drill family. Money conversations. We've been making business moves. Contemplating how to get it. Need to get in tune. Different topics. We got options. You can pick and choose. If more income ain't the outcome, got to switch the mood. We trying to help you to improve. Thanks for asking. Road the riches. Speak on broker days and past tense. Wealthy habits. Lately, I just want to stack chips. Took a risk and we've been running up a bag since G Vast Quest, quick to make a couple G's Detox, spin knowledge, put you on your feet Bug out, got the plate, make sure to pray before you eat At the table with the winners, come and take a seat Yo, 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 what up? For the next episode of Thanks for Asking, this one is gonna be a good one We got Kelly Better known as the Drill Fairy. And yo, Detox, start the introduction, boy. Let me get a round of applause. Stop acting like that, Prom. Now you on camera today. That's a fact. <laughs> Damn. You got that. <laughs> That's Damn. a big fact. Well, I'm, I'm real comfortable here, man. We got the Drill Fairy, Kelly G. Hey. <laughs> hey, Mad y'all. excited. I'm excited. <laughs> thank you for bringing yeah, me up. Man, thank you for coming, man. Like this was this feel like magic, man. Like and you just such a natural on the camera, man. Like you you talk and it's just you just open up. So when I hit you up and you know you was just like yeah let's do it, I was like man I like this type of energy. I know, I know. I was like, <laughs> well, I I really brought you here because I you know if you don't know. It's this ongoing thing about like drill music and, right. and young people and stuff like that, and you you know you're you're like on my side where you are. Wait, 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 clock, wait, clock. Wait. That's all right. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, what does that mean? Your side. Me what mean, am I against? <laughs> what am I against? All right, I, I'm not going. You you against the killing. You against the killing. I'm against the killing. We all against the killing. I'm not for the <laughs> That's killing. That's all I said. Was the music? Was drill music? Was that? Yeah. And I'm, I and I like to I would like to think it's a, I like to look at things in a more nuanced position where it's not just that it, you know, and all kids of every age have energy of similar uh, accords and this is just young people's way of getting that energy out that angst out because it was it was like that when I was growing up and the people before us. That's true, but they could tighten up on a couple of things. We are gonna get into that. Yeah, I love yeah, them yeah, though. Yeah. Um, as a a form of expression um, from where drill music came from to now. I think the genre, it's its not a bad genre. People don't understand drill music. Mm. But to understand the music, you got to understand the kid's story. They they come from a story that's, yeah. that's deeper than what we see. And some of them don't come from a horrifying story or a struggling story. They just come from a bored story. Mm. But... It's beef outside, and it's oh, been yeah, beef. It's, it's been beef right. since since before I was born. Like it's that's been beef fact. forever. Right. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. it's how you deal with the beef. That's where people get, you know, annoyed yeah. with with drill, with drill music, you know. But it's some really dope artists, and I get on them too. <laughs> I curse them out in a fucking minute. They know I don't play. <laughs> I see something on. I'm, Excuse me, take it down now. Mama Drew don't want none of that. <laughs> right. Cuz I love them and I and I have kids too and I know how it is and I know what it was like growing up and you feel like you don't have a voice and your voice don't matter and you feel like this because this person is going through it. Don't judge me, you know. Yeah, these kids yeah, are judged and they yeah. they don't trust nobody. Mm. That's a fact. For real. Let it, me ask you one question before you get into it. What's your definition of drill music? To, so so we can understand it. It doesn't represent the sweetest thing. Um, drill music is a type of music that talks about oppositions. It talks about people that they're beefing with. It talk, it's how they express getting it out. Drill mm. music and going on a drill is two different things. Mm. It's incorporated in the same thing. Mm. But people think, oh, that's a drill song because of the beat. No, it's a drill song because what's said. Mm. Oh, that's wow. that's mm. where wow. it changes. Because yeah, yeah, you different. have the drill beat and the whole drill actual song. 
now everybody you see the fast paced beats now the jersey yeah. drill mm-hmm. that's a faster beat does it does it mean they still not talking drill talk on it mm-hmm. yeah they are mm-hmm. you know so you can't talk um so you i feel like i hear songs about girls and stuff like on drill beats and stuff that's not drill that's just rap music that's just a drill beat it's just a, it's okay. just a song an artist that, like what's a drill artist i i i just i hate it but myself, I still be like, oh, that drill artist. Like, because what's a drill artist? An artist yeah. is an artist. Yeah. And that needs, you know, we need to constantly teach these young artists that's coming up that really want to make their career big. We got to teach them that you're not just a drill rapper. Yeah. Because the mind works crazy. Yeah. Once you believe it, it's, you put how, yourself in that box. How is your music ever going to change if you keep thinking you're just a drill rapper? Yeah. That's a fact. Yeah. You're not yeah. going to know what you're going to keep writing drill shit. <laughs> yeah. You know? So... It's different. So take me to the beginning, man, because it sounds like you sound like I think everybody has a story, but I want to know what kind of took you to drill in music anyway. What was it? Where did you grow up at? I'm from Brooklyn. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Um, Crown Heights. Crown Crown Heights? Heights, To be exact. So I'm like in between the Jews and the Caribbean Caribbean people. So are you Jewish? I might be because I was because I, I was adopted. Oh, really? Yeah. So my dad, I don't know. He might have been a rabbi from one King, off of Kingston. Wait. So you know. grew up. So you didn't grow up with your parents? No, I didn't grow up with my mom. Um, was like she was. She came from Jamaica here. Mm-hmm. She got pregnant when she was here. My sisters, two, I think two of my sisters was born in Jamaica. Mm-hmm. I want to believe, and she didn't want to deal with the hassles of having another baby mm. and she met someone who was actually my biological mom and my mom took her in took her kids in the whole pregnancy she made sure she got proper treatment everything um and that was the agreement the agreement was i'm gonna give you this child yeah and my mom was like you know you can't come back that's it once that's it mm. do you know your mom your real mom now i met her when this when i was in my 20s oh that's wow. dope yeah so my whole life i lived in a household where they wasn't biologically related to me but they are my family like that's my family that's family first yeah 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 definitely. you know what i'm saying like i look like them well, you pay if they pay That's for it. What's, this, what's that saying? You pay for them enough, right. you start looking like right. them. <laughs> it got so deep to where my mom never wanted to tell me because she didn't want me to rebel and yeah, shit like yeah. that. She used to be like, when I was pregnant with you, that's how deep it got. Like, Wow. No, yeah. That's great. So... Yeah. How, how did that make you feel? So I, I hit a lot. Like, I was living a double life for so long because I didn't want to break my adopted mother's heart mm-hmm. by letting her know that I'm sneaking and, and yeah. dealing with my real family. But then it was like, I get around my real family and I'm scared to say something about my, my adopted family. It put me, like, I really have trust issues. Wow. Yeah, wow. I got a lot of trust issues. Wow. And then one day I couldn't take it no more and it was just like, I was talking to my real mother and I was like, I just want you to thank her. Just thank her. Mm. I mean, I ain't perfect. Yeah. But she did a damn good job raising me cuz I want I love the streets. I was the, I was the boy. Mm. It's it's and it's crazy. My adopted mother has four daughters including me. My real mother has four daughters with me. Mm. So it's That's, that's it. Wow. It's yeah. weird. You know all your siblings? Yeah. And all of them. Yeah. And my adopted sisters with my sisters, yeah. they took care of my real sisters. That's crazy. So what, like they grew up together or something? My they, they, mom, my mom let them in. She moved them in. Watch why my real mother was pregnant with me, so she could make sure that she was carrying me yeah. right. Cause my real mother had a drug problem. Soon as she came to the states, she got addicted to crack. Remember, I'm born in '80, mm-hmm. so she had a really bad drug problem. That's why she couldn't keep. Me. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh-huh. so, yeah. But my my three real sisters, they was raised on Utica in Eastern Parkway, and I'm from Franklin in Eastern Parkway. So all those years, yeah, like I was down the block. I never family. knew, but they knew about me. Mm. Wow. Nobody never wanted to tell me. Somebody told me on my birthday. You know how that felt. Wow, that yeah, that's that's so know, how did that that's feel? Crazy. I don't know how that felt. That, that shit I can was like I was just staring. Growing up, I never heard no rumors. You know, growing up, kids are f- fucking wrong. Yeah. They're like, ha, 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 that's why you would adopt it. Because I was oh, old. Yeah, I'm the tallest one. Yeah. I, I'm built, only thing I'm built different than my um, yeah, I, I adopted adopt sisters. So I, but I still never, we all light skinned. I never, yeah. my mother kind of treated me better, everybody would say. But it was crazy. It's crazy. 
So my mother, my mother was a, she's Jamaican. I'm like, she still has an accent and stuff. And I forgave her. My adopted mother passed away from COVID. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry to hit that. God damn. So the COVID kind of led up to the drill. Because my mother, when she passed away May 7th, 2020, I was there holding her hand in Methodist Hospital. My mother didn't make it on a ventilator. Mm. She fought 34 days on a ventilator. Wow. She fought. Oh, my God. I used to be mad, like, um, that 34 days, I was, like, holding grudges because I'm watching her change color, and I'm just... Wow. But then I, now mm. it's my older sister that's that's keeping her on it, but I'm mad at her, but I'm not mad because I'm, like, she's the oldest. Nobody knows how she feels. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Everybody feel different in their own hearts. And nobody know what to do in those moments. Like, no. you're yeah. not prepared to no, deal no, with no. that. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it was, like, who's going to be there and my sisters know how I felt about my mother. Like, whoa, mm. that's my mom's. Like, that's they call her Mad Dog. She ain't play no games. My mother used to run down on any, anything. Mad Dog? Mad Dog. That was my mother's name in the hood. Oh, she hold, lived hold on, on Eastern <laughs> Parkway since 73. What the fuck are you wait, doing? Wait, wait, wait. Get name, <laughs> like that. Like, she was, like she, my mom's was like that. She was like that. Oh, my like, God. Oh, so she was in the streets, too. She was like that. My mother, my mother seen some trials and tribulations, but... My mother was a G. Like she, they respected my mother in the hood and in Crown Heights. Period. Oh, India, Mad Dog. That's your mother. Oh, okay. Oof. And she was not young. Like she just looked good at her age. Yeah. You know. So I had a really hard time dealing with that because I got sick, and then I swear I felt like I got my mother sick. But I know in my heart, yeah. like I fought myself a lot, yeah. and I started drinking a lot, and then I was popping pills. Mm. I mean, I guess you feel like you probably blamed yourself and all of that. Yeah, because I got sick in March. My mother got sick right after me. And I just felt like, I, because I, I saw my mother during that time. So I lived with a lot of guilt. I'm mm-hmm. learning now, like, what it, it is what it is. Like, what's meant is what's meant. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now. Saying it and actually living that and experiencing, like, it's nothing I could have done. This was just in the cards for her, that's hard to accept. It's hard to think. It's hard to feel that and, and be that because some people, you know, and I'll say it on a career aspect, some people aren't meant to be the the the, the, the number one selling artist. No. It's just not. But you still feel like you missed a break or something like that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like a, for instance, like a Derrick Rose. It's nothing he could have done. He was just in, he just he got injured st- yeah. injured all his career. What can you do? That's just your mm. body. But you still feel guilty, like damn man, like I could have been that person right yeah. there. You know what I'm saying? And you know, I kind of feel like mm. part of that is like with you is like, man, like I got sick first. That could have been her. And it's like, what what could you have done? Like, it's it's crazy because my mom she was texting me when she first went in the hospital, and they was like. We're going to keep her on a mask. She's going to be all right. We were seeing bodies in the funeral homes and the, on, on the trucks. Oh it was crazy. She, that was, that, the she was the first batch. Right. So I'm looking things up online. My sister's in California. We're always FaceTiming. We're like, uh, turn her on her side. Like, they was trying all type of things in different states. I was trying to use them. But it just... It, oh. it wouldn't. She went. They they was like, we're gonna put on a vent, but then she was breathing good. Then she wasn't. My mother was tired. My mother would live. My mother was born in forty seven. She lived life how she wanted to live, and she ain't. You know, my mother went to jail. My mother experienced a lot of stuff too and trauma in her life. She was tired. Yeah, that's how I look at it now. Yeah. She was tired. She yeah. know. Yeah. I remember before we put her on a vent. Before they put her on a vent later, we was all on Facetime and she was looking at us. I never forget. My mother just kept saying, "I'm sorry." Wow. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was it. Yeah, she was tired. It gave you closure, though, right? With that. Me being there, it did because my sisters was like, "Well, we're gonna let Kelly be there because they know I was with my mother." Mm-hmm. And she actually off the ventilator. She stayed with me for a good ten minutes. It didn't give me closure. I I, I think. Out of all my sisters, I still fight myself to this day about my mother. Every day. Because mm. I feel like we had a really crazy bond. Yeah. Um, like a love-hate relationship. Because as I got older, like I said, I wanted to be in the streets. And I didn't. Yeah. I wasn't hearing nothing. I ain't mm. listening to nobody when I was young. 
I was one of them. Oh. It's like, it was like, okay, I see you in a, a month or two. I'm out. Mm. So I didn't apologize to my mother and I just don't think she saw me at my full potential. Yeah. And that bothers me. But I know she good. We all, we got our ashes. She was like, uh, you know, but don't cremate me. My mother was so, she loved us so much that she wanted to be cremated because, so we could save money and have money for our kids. That's, mm. that's love. Yeah. Mm. That's funny. I, I think that same thing where I was like, don't be wasting all that money on no fucking casket bear. I'm dead. Let I me tell y'all motherfucker like, something. I'm yeah. talking to my kids yeah. now. <laughs> um, <laughs> Y'all know how I want to go out because Chris Brown better be at my motherfucking name. He better be doing my service. I love him. I tell my kids I want to go out flamboyant. Louisiana Ghetto, style. ratchet, and cute. <laughs> That's how I want to go out. Fuck it, right? Pink lipstick because I've been wearing his lipstick since like about, about 95. <laughs> I'm the first with the pink. That's what you're saying. Yeah. So you, you, you say you wasn't you wanted to be in the streets when did that start fucking elementary school i started oh smoking God. cigarettes in the oh. fourth grade i never oh forget that oh. shit oh. <laughs> miss roth yeah. was my fourth grade teacher lucy's was 10 cent when i started smoking cigarettes oh, and it was just like <laughs> i was the street girl mm. i lived on eastern parkway that's not the hood it's the hood but it's not the hood it's yeah. by the library it's like, <laughs> it's like the kids over there, I was a demon compared to them. Oh, man. Now, when you turn the corner and you get on Franklin, that's hold a different on, story. Hold on, hold on, you turn mama. What you mean? You was, what did you do that made you yeah. so demonic like that? It wasn't that I, because I was doing like, mm -hmm. like what? You God forgive me. All right, mm -hmm. I was. We went through that. Come on, I'm from Crown Heights. That's yeah, where the low lives. Hey, 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 that didn't hey. start to like 13, 14 with the Lizzie bag. We run it in until I got caught in Bloomingdale's. They got their own jail. They got their own jail. Had you fucked up in there, like. <laughs> 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 but like I was doing that that was typical for us because yeah. growing up at Crown Heights that was something that was really big at that time mm -hmm. um, even before my time like when I was young Yeah. Um, but just like the gangs get jumping just doing stuff that I was not supposed to be doing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it was just like you know yeah everybody go through stuff like I had I was fighting in a lot of stuff growing up too I had a lot of you know depression and stuff yeah, like that uh -huh. I, that I still suffer with now mm -hmm. um, but I was doing too much. Yeah. You know, I was having sex young. I, my, my son was, I was 15 when I had my son. So hold no. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> that's, what that's what I'm saying. Nobody can if tell you me had nothing. you at 15, when did you start having sex? 14. 14. Keep it real, my wife. <laughs> I was 14. I was 14, 14 years old. 14. It wasn't my baby father. It was maybe two before. It was a grown dude? It wasn't grown? Never. No, no, I mean, not grown. I mean, 20 might have been um, grown. Yeah, because my, my, my two oldest, my son is 27 now. I'm 43. Wow, I wouldn't have that. I just turned yeah, 43 I oh, Friday. Wow. The only reason why I knew that because I seen you say that one time. I Bomb. don't, like, I don't, I love my age and I, I embrace the young and the old. Yeah. Like, I don't care about that. Yeah, yeah. me too. Um, and when you run around for so much, it's like you, it, it, it becomes you. Like, the way I talk, the way I act, it's yeah, just like, yeah, yeah. I know my sons be like, this bitch, I do not want her going to open school <laughs> night with me. She be embarrassing me. <laughs> but. What was that like when you, uh, when you got pregnant at 15? I was living with my sister. My mother couldn't take me. She Wait, ho, you got, ho, 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 wait, how, you, you not going to skip that. You living with your sister at 15? My, no, my mother took, my sister was like freaking Cruella DeVille. She was the mean sister. At that time, mm -hmm. I didn't understand that. She just wanted me to do right. Mm -hmm. So I always like, she the mean one, but she wear Gucci and stuff, so she gonna buy me anything I want. <laughs> so it was like, I, we, I respected her. Mm -hmm. My sister was, my, my two older sisters is always about their business. Like mm -hmm. they, good jobs. They always was like that. Yeah. I never saw, and my, my sisters never gave me a reason to look the other way. Like they yeah. was, I was, it was me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And my mother was like, no, you gotta go. This is too much. Niggas coming around here looking for you with bats and shit. What? You got no. one? I used to be. I'm saying. How did it get to the point where Mom Dukes was like, "Nah, I can't take this." What were the incidents? It was just a lot of incidents. Like, <laughs> oh damn, God. I was fighting boys, girls, grandmothers. I remember one day. <laughs> I, I remember one day. Um, this lady 
God bless her soul. God, I'm just repent. I'm just telling you my story. Please don't say it. Please. <laughs> um, you are forgiving here. This she is made me mean. so mad. I glued her in her house. <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. I glued her door shut. Oh, my God. And wait. they had to call a fire to her. Miss Griffin, y'all know, my niggas know the parkway. We put ketchup with maxi pads on her door. Oh, oh my God. God. We, we, we glued the door shut. And she just fucking made me mad because it was like I was pregnant and I was trying to hide it. And that's when Columbia was popping. Remember Columbia jackets? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I had like the green one. And she was like, when is that a basketball? I was like, bitch, I'm going to get you. I'm going to show you a basketball. <laughs> um, she was like the mean lady on the block. She was like mixed. She was black and white. Mm -hmm. And she was just so old and mean, you know, mm -hmm. like them type of women. It was just like, I'm going to tell your mother, she know. <laughs> you know, it was like that. <laughs> like... <laughs> so my mom sent me to Canarsie to live with my sister mm -hmm. because she was mean and I was scared to do anything around her. Yeah. And, st and still got pregnant in her house. Wow. <laughs> Sorry, Sha. Oh. <laughs> she used to work at night. Listen, I took advantage of that. Yeah. And so her fucking husband my came home. My ex-husband came home for a lunch break. <laughs> oh, I had my naked baby father oh, in the closet. God. And he knew. I woke up the next morning. Like, he left quietly. The next day, the looks they gave me, I said, I got to get out of here. But that's around that time, I was pr probably pregnant already. Yeah, yeah. And I got pregnant. I went to Canarsie High School, the gym teacher. I took a test. It was positive. My mother said, come back home. And I kept the baby. My son is 27 and never had a problem with him. Never, he went to school, graduated, got a good job. He's a really good kid. That's He's a solo kid. Mm -hmm. he's, he's one of them. Okay, well, hey. I'll say one of them. He yeah, ain't yeah, that, yeah. but I never had a problem. Then I got pregnant again. My son is 23. Hey, well, so this is what, like 18 or something? Yeah, 19. Oh, 19. Oh, 19. Okay. And, My math ain't that bad. <laughs> and he's a millennium baby. He was, he's 23 now. No problems. Graduated, work. And then I got pregnant in 2007 and had a 2008 kid. And he's oh. 15. And oh it's different. God. Yeah. 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 Oh. That's then you want to. This is why I love the drill kids. Mm. I because I have a son that's fifteen, and if I'm trying to do something and guide something, I gotta guide them the right way. Yeah. You yeah. know, but but I also gotta. Sh I'm from the streets, and I gotta teach my sons that fuck what they doing. This they job. This what they supposed to do. They supposed to diss each other. They yeah. this a job. Just don't worry about that. Mm -hmm. You gotta do it this way. You know. If my son ever told me he wanted to be a drill rapper. You got to deal with that, them consequences because mm. you know what's going on. Because, mm. you know, you, it's, it's really hard to tell a kid no nowadays with certain things. So how do I look saying, no, you can't chase your dreams? Because yeah. what if that's a dream that he really want to chase? Mm -hmm. He want to be a rapper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you got to let them know accountability. Yeah. Because yeah. that's what we lacking. That's a yeah. fact. The accountability yeah. is like, that's, what, that's the only thing I hate about drill music. And it's not, it, nobody's taking accountability for it. Yeah. You know, oh, it does get it, it start happening when you when the feds come or the or the police come or the or the the Grim Reaper come. You going you going face you going to deal with them problems, man. You going to pay for that. Whatever you do, you going to pay for that. That shit going to come at that cost, and you. But this is why you gotta teach your collect. kids. You, yeah. you got to teach them from young, cause certain people don't know how to pay for it. That's why other yeah. people is paying for it, cause they're running their mouth. They don't know accountability. They don't know. This is what you gotta stand on. This yeah. is what you. This yeah. is what you did. Yeah. Nobody made you do this. Mm -hmm. You did this on your own. Yeah. So you can't put this person in jail because you did it. This is certain things you gotta teach your mm -hmm. kids from early. You know. Yeah, we're talking about snitching, if I'm not mistaken. We're right? talking about snitching. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that's yeah, man. They quick to say what this one did. Listen, is what yeah, I did. Because it's easy when you you know when. When you're untouchable, you don't feel like you. When you don't feel like you're, you're not being held accountable, oh, that's easy. But when that when it's time to, for the chickens to come home to roost, man, and they, you know, how many drill rappers right now that's not even twenty five, that's facing life and death. Mm. This is real. Mothers done cried. I done cried on the phone with mothers, drill mothers, really big drill artists. They moms, they kids is fighting life. Mm. Because 
they they could have got off. But guess what, Rico, Feds, here we come. You said your your click, your movement. That's not the move. That's not the, that's not a music movement. Yeah. That's what they're saying, yeah. and that's how these kids is getting tied up because they don't know how to separate the streets and the music. Yeah. 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 That's what's messing them up. That Rigo shit is crazy now. What I saw the seeing that, I was like, yo, these guys don't even make money. How are you getting with Rico? Like, cause it's, I think of Rico as the mob. You know what I'm saying? That's like, what I always thought. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now they when they was doing it on uh what's the other dude? The hot, the hot N word, the hot nigga, uh Bobby. Bobby Schmur. I was like, Rico, like, you don't think you that's a stretch? Like, these are no, just young not kids to them. just, you know, like was doing wild shit. Being immature, I mean, granted, some of it ended in some very violent actions, but this I just, I, you know, once I saw seeing that, I'm like, oh, nah, it's different now. Like, it's different because of social media, it's yeah. different because of the cameras, it's yeah. different because of all the electronics and the digital fucking yeah. life. Because yeah. shit was going on in the 90s, and exactly, the 80s. yeah, that's the a same fact. shit. It, it, it probably was worse because yeah. niggas was going in crack houses, it was, and, yeah. and it was crazy because yeah. I remember that. Yeah, it's just it's more accessible through social media now. Yeah, it, yeah, it wasn't you know like you was left alone when don't go down to don't go to Brownsville. It, it's dangerous down there now. That sh- that dangerous Brownsville is on somebody's phone. They taking mm-hmm. a camera. They want to yeah. go shoot in Brownsville. Yeah. Nah, we going to the Ville. Yeah. That's crazy yeah. to me. Like, but that's crazy. There's Brownsville, but there's other parts of New York, Brooklyn. I'm saying, speaking for Brooklyn, yeah. that's worse than Brownsville. Yeah, but it's more organized. What? Mm. Man, you go to Borough Park and all them other areas. In, mm. in, in Brooklyn and you tell me with all them Asians and, and then you go to the Hispanic part in Sunset Park and you see how many niggas getting put down they just not they they organize better yeah you know yeah you yeah. gotta this all of this stems from two who's really looking after the, these kids and I say that and I'm talking as far as the big homies yeah and all of that they change now it's not it's not the big homies is it, that you is, think. It, is it big homies is trying to talk in the they just not listening? Because it could be kind of both. It is kind of both, but you got to understand now with the new generation and the new wave of kids, the big homies is really they age. They they are looking at big homies for for maybe what they the work that they put in. Mm-hmm. Mm. They're not looking at them as big homies for anything else. Yeah. Because what could you really teach me and we the same age? Yeah, yeah. And we done seen the same street. <laughs> Oh, hold on. So the question is, can you be a big homie for the for the drill? I, I think to certain artists right now, I am a big homie yeah. to certain artists. Um, cause I am I could go to any side. Mm. You know, this is about sides. Oh, drill music is about sides. It is. Yeah. It's about sides. And the fact that they don't bother me if I could I could go to this side, I could go to that side, they won't ever press me and say, mm-hmm. Oh, you interviewed the ops, or why are you talking to them, or you yeah. with us, or this yeah. and that. They, I've never experienced that. Mm-hmm. I have never experienced disrespect. I mean, they want to fuck. They be in my DMs. So, oh God. I 17, even... <laughs> 17 talking about changing my life. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> whoa. Um, well, it's going to change your life. <laughs> right. Good. Right. <laughs> I, but I ran with that cougar shit. Yeah. Because... I started making them come to me more. Mm. And once they realized it's just a little flirting thing, they started yes. being more comfortable. I talk to them yeah. on a deeper level than the music. And I I get plenty of phone calls five o'clock in the morning saying that they don't know what they, they want to do. They they something not right in their head. And mm-hmm. How do you feel when you get those type of... Uh, I cry. Sometimes yeah. on camera, I cry. Sometimes at home, I pray for these kids like they mind. But then it start messing up my home because I start bringing it home. Mm. So, so you starting to get traumatized by the you know yeah, because it's like ugh, but it hurts. It hurts to see that some of these kids don't want to be in these predicaments. They want to just live regular lives. Mm. But I think that when they got into this whole drill shit, they didn't realize how deep it was gonna yeah, be. Yeah. And because honestly, I, we could make a drill track. Yeah. And it could go viral, and we could be lit. Yeah. Like, like serious. That's, that's crazy how fast it can happen now. Like TikTok too really boosted drill music and took drill to a whole nother place because of getting sturdy, the dancing. See, this this wave, you you want to know why nobody's gonna tear down drill music. This is why when people say, Oh, do you think drill is gonna be around forever? I do. 
because organizations and the government, they know what's lit. TikTok, all of this stuff. We see the glamorous stuff. We yeah. see social media. It's deeper than that, yeah. if you mm. ask me. Yeah. They're not going to take something away that's, that we're, that they're making money off of us. They're making money. That getting sturdy dance, yeah. mm-hmm. look how it turned out. Mm-hmm. They had teachers and fucking firefighters and police officers and stuff do these dances with these kids. Mm. That's, wow. that, that make, that's is deep. Mm. Wow. This is a multi-billion dollar business. Like, just that genre of music. Yeah. They fucking stream crazy. That's why these kids be 21 and be millionaires. Mm. Yeah, to, to hear that and to know, even if they millionaires, there's somebody else who's like profiting enormous off of that and at the same time condemning it. And it's just like, it almost feels hypocritical where, you know, like a lot of people in the black community will be critical of it because it affects our community directly. Mm. So somebody like Bug Out, he has a son. And if he had a son that was growing up in an area that had that was heavily concentrated with drill, he has to deal with those people. You know what I'm saying? Even if it's um in inadvertently where you you know what I'm saying, that mean, you know, you're not involved in the drill scene, but because you on that block, something get somebody hit it up or spin the block or and something. It's, and it's ill that you say that too, because it's like contradicting, right? Because yeah. you could like the music, right? Yeah. But you don't like what it stands for. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So when you have a child, that's like conflicting. Cause yeah. you your, your son might hear you listening to that music. Yeah. He think you into it now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Then he go out there and then he start doing that type of music. So that's that's the ill. Um, um, genre right there of music for for that alone. Yeah. Know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's cr- it's not like well, uh, battle rap or whatever. You just battle with words. Yeah. This is like I'm going to kill you. Yeah. Know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then it makes the music go even better yeah. with the people that yeah. like it. Yeah. Know what I'm saying? That's what make it crazy. That's and that's the this that's is, the problem with it. That's, that's the only problem with it. That's it. That's just that's the only problem. And this is why me as a parent. I'm into this. Yeah. I listen. I I listen to the music because I want to know who the fuck is saying what about who. Yeah. Mm. I you know and yeah. I have to I have to be I have children yeah. that and I live in a section of Brooklyn that's not all pleasant. Yeah. Things we happen. deal with it right. Things yeah. happen. I need to know what goes on in this business because in reality, that's all I do is not just drill. Yeah. I'm a podcaster. I interview. Everybody, yeah. so I really don't have to really get deep into the politics, but I need to. I feel like yeah. it's my duty if I want change in the communities because not seeing these kids, these kids are not bad kids. Yeah, I just feel like they don't have help from the labels that they need. Yeah, they don't have the industry help and they don't have the personal help, yeah. and that's fucking them. Mm. Mm. It's like, damn, if I could get industry help, then I'll know what artist development is. Yeah. I'll know how to budget my money. Yeah. I'll know this. I'll know that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll know what not to bring to this side. Mm-hmm. Yeah. At least if you have one, they have neither. Mm. You know? Yeah, so um, there's no yeah. support. So you really independent. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? And Even with a label. <laughs> 21 and independent is crazy. Like, because it's like, there's no, there's no guidance. Like, no. What do you do when you make a mistake? Every, cause every artist makes a mistake. How do you, how do you overcome that? When do you, how do you know how to navigate and move in the streets? Cause a lot of times they don't even be realizing they celebrities. Cause like you said, two weeks ago, you was just Justin. Now you talk drilly, you know what I'm saying? And they, you know, everybody seeing you on TV, they looking at you different and you moving like you with anonymity and nah, you can't do that no more. And a, a lot of them do that, and that's where they get caught up. You got to, mm-hmm. they have to understand. You know, this is what, is a, is a dude, um, a manager in Vok. His name is Vok. He's from um, Brooklyn. He is, like, the only person I know that could deal with all the sides. Like, he mm-hmm. manages different sides that yeah. have beef. They all have beef with each other. Mm. And he's so dope because he does management. He works with the labels and stuff. But he also is like their big brother and like a mentor to them. Mm. And the artists that he's dealt with, mentally, they're okay. You Mm. understand what I'm saying? From what I see, I can tell that somebody is behind them and I can tell that somebody is 
is good with them. Yeah, yeah. You know, everybody don't have it that good like that. Yeah. You, I'm 21. You give me a whole bunch of streams, pussy, drugs, weed, fly clothes. Yeah. What do you want me to do? What it you think all. I'm gonna do? I'm doing it all. I'm doing that. Sh- I'm doing that shit now. That's a fact. That's a fact. That's a fact. Yeah, give me a couple of dollars. You know what I'm saying? Like, fuck world. that. They give don't me it understand. All. Like, they don't. It's 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 more trending. Yeah. Than it is anything. And from Chicago, they that shit was serious. Yeah, that's that was real. real. That's that was fact. real. Academics like. brought a whole nother life to our eyes when Chicago Drill first came out. Mm-hmm. It yeah. was like, what? You got these hammers in this video? We didn't really see stuff like that. Even yeah. with gangster rap. Yeah. We heard it, but we didn't see it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then it came to Brooklyn. And then it went to UK for the beats because everybody in Brooklyn was using the beats from UK. Yes, yes, yes. It was very popular. Pop Smoke and all of them right. started incorporating the, the UK. You know about drill. Yeah, yeah. And then that's when we saw the little beef that was in the streets that wasn't that loud. Mm-hmm. It became something. Yeah. That's when the beef started. Yeah. I think that Brooklyn drill is very different than the Bronx. The Bronx drill is younger. Yeah. A little bit right. more... Free, yeah, and they have like that demon voice and shit like that. I don't feel like they say they sound like they say they sell us all of them sound like Batman, but (laughs) no, lyrically, there are some dope drill artists that I know that could give me a 16 without even saying one diss. Mm. That don't smoke on nothing, I don't like the smoking stuff. I tell them that all the time. There was a light skin, I forgot, I I forget his name. Um. He did a song with a da- with a, with a with a rapper from Florida, some shit like that. He, it wasn't even a drill song. I was like, oh shit, this shit is dope. I forget the damn. My my daughter was showed me the video. I can't remember the name. Oh man, and it it wasn't drill though, and it was just like, oh shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I'm into it. My son knows how to rap very well. Does he want to be a drill rapper? No. Mm. He knows that that's fucking not me. That that's on TV. That's yeah. them. And I do what I do. Every kid don't have parents that's going to teach them that. And every kid don't have that. So some kids might say, oh, oh, he's saying that. I'm saying that too. You know how much yeah. kids come up to me like, why you interview the ops? Mm. <laughs> what you tell them? Because I wanted to. What's up? <laughs> you want to take a picture? Come on. <laughs> I go to the kids come up to me all the time. Yeah. But I'm battling it because I'm like, I love the kids and I really get into the communities and I talk to the council people. I talk to all the, uh, I I try to get involved with the projects now. That's what I'm doing now with the community centers. And some of these artists are really, they're they're so dope and they want to see these kids do better. And they say, yeah, we'll we'll do a free concert for them. Some of these artists will. But people just be so scared or just think that there's just some... That think that they're gonna be messy. Yeah. I have been to so many events and I've never seen no issues. Mm. Mm. I like to hear that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I think I, I, it was points in, with rap music, gangster rap music, that was the issue too. Nobody wanted to touch it yeah. because they felt like um, they don't want the, the consequences that come with it. But you know, there were certain artists like Jay Z and stuff like that who showed that you no, know, you can have an all rap concert. And not have no violence, cause that's what the that's I think that's what the Rockefeller Hard Knock Life tour symbolized. Like that was right. like the first mm-hmm. fifty two city yeah. tour that was all rap that had yeah. no incidents and shit like yeah. that. And I still yeah. fuck with that music too. Like yeah. I'm like I'm a I'm a hip hop fiend. Like yeah. yeah, my favorite rappers is Big L, Jada. That's Jada, Big, Big L, L, and Cam. Big uh, L is my favorite rapper. You, from, you sure you ain't from Harlem? Nah, that's crazy. I get into all. <laughs> they be like, get out of here. And I like Fab too. I think I think Fab is not spoken for a lot. Yeah, like, I like Fab too. I think Fab is dope. Yeah. It, his punchlines was catchy. His metaphors. Nobody's fucking with his metaphors. Who better, Fab or Jada? Watch it. Damn. That's a personal question. That's, I mean, wow, don't that's do that. Don't do that. Because you, you got to under, look, look at me about to break it down. Because <laughs> you got to understand, Jada is more a street. He, he will rap more about the streets and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Fab to me is more, um, he raps more other types. He raps as if he's he got it already. Like I'm made already. I'm rich. Yeah. I'm lit. Jada take you back to a time when you hungry, where, mm. you know, it's a different type of vibe. Yeah. Like, I, I, you can't put them together. I, feel, I, I just did not know how many people love 
Jada Kiss as like their best what? artist. Yo, you're a bug. <laughs> no, my, no, I what? don't even as a dope rapper. Never, I'm never saying that, but you know they probably gonna kill me. But I didn't look at him as a top five rapper. I never did. Like I, I looked at him as person, somebody who could have done that. But like, Mm-mm. at least when I was growing up, the albums meant something, and like that was like he he, he stayed relevant. Ever yeah. since he's been out, he definitely stayed That's relevant. That's what's making him do. His yeah. n- his numbers, I, I, I you your poppy was the, the yeah, numbers I was back wasn't then, it, the numbers wasn't. But, but it didn't even matter about the numbers because Nas never Nas, did. Nas, that's what I was about to say. He never he, did crazy numbers. He's number yeah. four. He's my he's number four. But it was just like I, I I'm just thinking about like a classic hip hop album. I never thought Jada Kiss had one of those. But and you I, never heard nothing nah. weak from him. Either. I never heard nothing That's weak. That's what either. makes him yeah. yeah, yeah. That's what makes him because matter. Jay's yeah. um because you gotta remember J- Jada Kiss came from the locks. The locks too. Styles P is nice. nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought the We Are the Streets album was their best album to me. I mean, yeah. I thought I, I thought, became I mean, a fan. The best of locks the was best. hitting on the streets before anything. Oh, that's what yeah, made him crazy. Was, oh, yeah. I know. I always that was a fan of the locks. Like, fuck like, you. They, that's they always, yeah, they yeah. Could fuck do you. No wrong. Yeah. No wrong. Yeah. No wrong. Yeah. I ain't yeah. lying. They was always you. Always looking yeah. for them like that. Yeah, yeah. Even that's what I said. Up to date. Jada yeah, stay like, Jada. He, yep. I just, it never falls off. Never. I, I guess part no. of my criteria was you had to have like a classic album. Like no, when I, when I, I, I hear, disagree with but that. But when I hear Nas, yeah. I hear Nas, I hear Big, I hear Pac, I hear Jay. Like all these guys have like classic albums. Some of them had multiple yeah, classic albums. He probably breaks the yeah. barrier of that. Yeah, right. exactly. Like, so that's why I don't need never, no classic yeah, album. Like you he, just know that he's ill. Yeah, you, you, did, you don't you don't think Cam Cam is nice Cam too. Is nice no, too. First, like, first album Confessions. Confessions. I like come home. With, I like Cam, Cam will play play on you sometimes. Yeah, though. he'll get play play sometimes. Yeah, he'll that's get, the problem. Yeah. So you'll get mad at him for that. But and I, get play I was play. about to say that's the, the you know this is football. That's the argument with To Terrell Owens and what's the oh, other one? Nice. Um, the one who played for the Vikings, Randy Moss. Randy oh, Moss. Moss. Mm-hmm. Randy, looking, Woody. thank you. Randy Moss take you, and you've heard this. To never take off. Randy Moss used to be better, but he took off plays. That's how I feel with Cam. Where it be like, mm-hmm. Cam I have Cam got dope albums, mm-hmm. arguable. You mm-hmm. know, it's albums I think is classics, but you can argue those. But sometimes I felt Cam took off. Yeah, Jada never yeah. took yeah. off yeah, a fucking fact. rhyme. You know that's what I'm a saying? Fact. That's a fact. Never took um, off a rhyme because too the the style the styles is different. Yeah, again, mm-hmm. definitely. It, um, he was. I think Cam and the whole dip set was more of legendary trend setters. Yeah, like, oh, absolutely. I, I, absolutely. Nobody's yeah. fucking yeah. with them when it comes yeah. to that. Yeah. yeah, I feel what they did could never be done again. Yeah, because Jim Jones is lyrically, it's like he me, got up, he stepped it up. He, he, he stepped, stepped away. Away. What? I, I love the older yeah. Jim. Yeah. Like yeah. the yeah. gym now is mm-hmm. the gym. Everything yeah. you just had Keen Streets on there, man. Oh, Far Rock, I didn't go. He just had a the. Dopest show. Yeah, Davies yeah. popped up. I didn't go. Oh my god! I don't even say I didn't go. Um, Kaya was there too. Kaya was, was there. there. Yes, Kaya yeah. was there. Um, those are the guys I started doing this with. I started hosting first. Oh. Um, before I actually had my own show, and I was on another podcast before this. Um, mm. Gods of the City of Gods. Um, but I started with King Streets. I I um. With D Chambers, with Drew Ski. Oh, we interviewed D Chambers. That's yeah, cool. Chambers. I oh I started. God. He actually got me into the hosting with Drew Ski. So I know Far Rock Devi. Yeah, you got to get he him. Did up a video here. in here before? Yeah, Devi. Yeah, yeah. He's him in, and Gav. Gav right, yeah. Sinatra work. Oh um, really? Yeah. Healthy story. Like mm. all the Queens artists. Like I'm really tuning into because. Queen show love. Queen's drill. <laughs> it's really not that much drill artist. It's Shawnee. Yeah. You know, free Shawnee, Shawnee, Shawnee Ben Laden. And I think it's Say Drilly is from Queens. Like those are like the two main That's the biggest uh artist from Drill. I'm, yeah. I'm gonna put my my guy Hood Fly can we coming. Oh, Hood Fly, but he's not a drill. Yeah. I mean. Okay. No, oh, he's yeah. drill. He's drill. I, I think they are so adorable. I met them. <laughs> <laughs> he is just a little cutie patootie. Oh I did. I hosted a showcase, Queens mm. District. Oh, I'm shout high. out to Queens District, yeah. man. They, they, they like, I don't know who they are, but them are Those are my friends. They support, man. Support. Yeah. Them. They support me. I support them. Yeah. You know, the whole Queens is like really supportive. Like, yeah. I really love Queens. And it was a time I really didn't like Queens because y'all kind of thought y'all was just too stuck up. 
the boys from Queens. I used to wear your discus sweatsuits. Are so we gonna let you say that? <laughs> no. Exactly. No, no. Jam, y'all had y'all discus sweatsuits back in fact. the days. Yeah, that's a yeah. fact. Y'all was fly niggas, though. That's a fact. <laughs> no, he's saying, nah, nah, me. You say that, I'm not gonna tell you no. I'm gonna nah, Queens, Queens, Queens. Nah, we was, was, like, we was crowded, though. Nah, nah, you take know, that. when you wanna steal, steal a parent's cars, that's where we, go, we, we pulling up in Queens. I remember going to Kew Gardens when I was young and just... Queens was different. Mm-hmm. It was houses. Mm-hmm. Queens was like a breath of fresh air. Mm-hmm. That's what everybody from Brooklyn say. They yeah. always they migrate. We so Brooklyn close. To Queens. Yeah. Brooklyn Queens yeah. is so close. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It was different. Just like in Brooklyn, Bed Stuy's always been a different vibe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Brownstones. Yeah. A lot of yeah. black businesses. This yeah. is nothing new. It's been yeah. around. Yeah. Like you know what I'm saying. It was just been a different vibe. So, I I go everywhere. Wherever the music is, I go. How'd you get into music? Um, my sister, her name is Cherokee. She wasn't, she is an artist now. She was a really big artist before she wrote a lot. She, um, was Neo Soul before Neo Soul got popping. Mm-hmm. So she didn't take off. Ah, uh, so they didn't, so the labels didn't support her at that time. They supported her, I think more for like, like modeling, writing. My sister's been on fucking numerous magazines she did soul train she's worked with Bilal, jill scott she's been to the neverland michael jackson's crib wow that's crazy that is crazy are you really connected to i've music? been to prince studios in california oh, i did that's a dope. yeah I, yeah that's dope yeah i i did studio like larabee studios is a really big studio in california and i've i recorded there i met gladys knight I've met Usher. Mm. I've met so many dope people. Queen wow. Latifah, Erica Badu. My sister really put me in a position to win. I fucked it up, though. Oh, you got to break that you gotta, down. You got to yeah, tell you us gotta why. Tell that why. What, what um, was you doing? You, did you, you was a singer, a rapper? I was rapping first, um, and then I started singing. I My sister moved to California when I was young. And as I got older, I just started realizing, like, I'm kind of talented. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, my God, I'm funny, too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I was telling my sister, and she was like, well, we're going to come out here and record. And at that time, she was trying to sign the whole, she was trying to make all of us rap. I'm like, even my mother? <laughs> she wanted the whole production team. <laughs> and first my sister was like, you should do comedy, and we're going to do this. She pushed so hard that I pushed back. She, mm. I, I did... Um, the voices, well, I went on, what do you call it? With auditions for the voice, Bay Bay Kids, for LaShawn's voice. Oh, man. I've been That's in fire. Been fucking history. That's that fire. Was shit. My, my sister put me in, like, a lot of really good positions, and... You wasn't ready for it. I would come back home to New York. Like, I stayed. My sister helped me lose weight. She was Buddhist, very natural, vegan. To this day, she's still like that. Mm-hmm. She was the, she's the lover, like the nurturer sister. Yeah. I always see her. I always say, where's your incense? I always imagine her with the incense coming out of <laughs> her mouth. Like, she put me on a Jimi Hendrix, like the mamas and the papas. Like, I really know music. Mm-hmm. Like, I love music. So, we ca- I, ca- I went to California, did a song. They shopped it around. Motown came. Mm. Had my lawyer getting ready. Did everything. Got signed. Got dropped. Wow. How? Whoa. Hey. Because MCA took over. That's when Andre Harrell took over. Mm-hmm. And he didn't want kids on the label. I wasn't the only, like, young okay. star. And Just like that? Just like that. My name was Butterscotch. B-U-D-D-A, Scotch is on the way. That was my old oh, school no. shit. <laughs> 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 like, my sister, when I first went out there, I graduated junior high school. And that was like right before I got pregnant. Mm. So I was like, all right. My sister got me in my nose ring. She changed my whole look. And I just, that was the only thing I didn't like. You got me wearing these fucking California the shirts that button yeah. up. I look like I got on Converse. It wasn't, it wasn't yeah. Brooklyn. Definitely not Brooklyn. So I was like, I don't want to do this. Like I want to, I want to do my, just, I want to represent where I'm from. I'm not from LA. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But Came back home and didn't go back. Mm. You think if you would have stayed out there, it would have been... Life would have been different. I was... My sister had me everywhere. Everywhere. I met so many people. I remember D'Angelo. Um, I went to the... What? Damn, what song You didn't meet that? R. Kelly, did you? No. <laughs> I wish. I like R. Kelly. 
I, I mean, his so. music. <laughs> his music. I, I think, think his wanna... music. I don't think you would have wanted to have meet him. No, I don't think he. Shows. I'm too ratchet. He wouldn't have wanted. He'd be like that bitch talk. She gonna tell. She gonna tell. I'm gonna give her a couple of dollars. She gonna tell on me. He'd have been. He'd have been a rap. The, the problems would have been solved. <laughs> Shit, they didn't want me. I, nah, I, he, he's a dope artist. I'm not saying that, but I don't think you would have met him. He, he, he he's a dope told. artist, and he's he's not even an artist to me because it's like you, everything is gone. Yeah. Everything is gone. He has nothing. Yeah. How could you have the whole world in your hands and you have nothing? You don't have nothing to show for it. But these women, that's... Some of them dragged it. Some of them. I think some of them dragged it. I have no comment on that. The older ones, I think they were dragging it. I don't know. You know what? I don't think it. I don't think it. Um, the older women, because some of the women I was looking like, girl, nobody did not want you. Stop. <laughs> I think but, some of them was a little lying. A, I don't know. That's, that's a power thing, though. So sometimes it don't even be mattering if they be ugly. They, they just, just need to know. You know what I'm saying? It, it, and how many times? How many people is coming out that is like Jesus Christ? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That was a. I I, I didn't really want to watch it. It's just like. Not only because he was just R. Ke- Damn, R. Kelly. Yeah. Like, it was just like, wow. People was making jokes, but that shit. I remember the first time I, I put up something, and uh, my sister, the one that sings, she was like, bitch, take that down. We don't represent that. I was like, what did I do? Because I was like, I'm never going to stop listening to R. Kelly. Mm. I was like, why does it all, all lives matter? Why all women lives matter? But I didn't understand. Yeah. You know, I was looking at it from the outside and whatever. But I don't really get into the blogging thing. Like, I don't know nobody's business. Yeah. I don't really care. Yeah. You I don't know. either. So we're going to get off that. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're yeah. definitely going to get off all But I came, I came back, did stuff. I also um, was dealing with Flavor Unit when I came back. Oh, really? Yeah. What was that song I liked on it? Was it like uh, 500? Yeah. Uh, it was a guy who was a rapper who was L, who starts with an R. He made like a song that was crazy. It was like in two thousand one or some shit. I don't like at that time. I just I started just solely singing because I, yeah. I had my son at that time, and I'm like, damn, I really want to do this music thing. Yeah. But then, damn, I'm smoking this weed. I'm hanging out. I'm drinking. I ain't doing right. Um, it's just it was too much. But yeah. I got it together. I went to school. Did what I had to do yeah, and stuff. Yeah. But by that time, I was a mom, full time mom, and left it alone but I always knew that I talked a lot so I'm like (laughs) let me just start dibbling dabbling but it wasn't until after COVID and yeah going through what you went through I had to go get help for taking pills I I used to be like fucked up on Percocets are you still you you, so you do I, I wanted to ask you that too like do you um see a therapist I used to first it went to bereavement therapy and then it was just like no I got to get soul searching. I was in a 16 year marriage that ended. My mother just died. Damn. I'm on these pills. My kids, they around. Yeah. I didn't care about nothing. It's time to speak to somebody. Yeah. So I started speaking to um, therapy. And at that time, he was just calling me because the COVID and yeah, all of yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. At least she was brave enough to do that because a lot of people ignore therapy and just be fucked up. Yeah. I still got a therapist. Yeah, everybody. I still got mine on speed dial. Whoever I could call first, I don't know. Somebody mm-hmm. going to talk to me. I think I need a... I think all... You know, I don't know if I said this in another interview or not, but I think all entrepreneurs should have therapy. I need a therapist because mm-hmm. this shit is so up and down. You know what I'm saying? Some moments you up because mm-hmm. of the, you know, the success and then some... You be like, my God, I made one mistake and this shit didn't cost me about 10 bands and... Oh, I, I, I ain't get to that point yet. I, I'm still on. <laughs> they don't want to come up on my show. Yeah. I'm done. But I can't get no interview. Even that type of shit yo, where it's just like, yo, this, this shit is hard, man. This is hard. Every, and most people don't understand because you just go to work, go home. And you still have your own personal life. Yeah, exactly. And if, you know, God forbid they don't understand or they're not supportive of it. No, it, it this shit. I, I mean, I've listened to enough case studies and just listened to enough people to know, like, a lot of times it be the mental issues that break them down of why they can't get over the hump to get to that next level. Because you there alone, you yo, you go through ups and downs, man. 
you know, when you, especially a lot of times people put their life into this, their mm-hmm. life savings. This shit fails. What I'm going to do? This is hard. That's why music is so dope because it's therapeutic too. <sighs> yeah. Very therapeutic. Yeah. And that's why I, I love music. Like, I cry to music to yeah. this day right now. If I hear, even with the youngsters, if I hear a song that I like, yeah. I cry because I'm like, look, you working. Yeah. If somebody could just shake you and tell yeah. you how mm-hmm. how dope you are, like Appreciate I believe, that. Yeah. yeah, like, and I believe that. I mean, sometimes a hug could change a life. Like, That's a fact. Yeah. I still believe in that. I talk my shit and stuff like that, but I'm really, really passionate with this. And yeah. I used to think like, fuck the money, but nah, nah, I don't think like that no more. Nah, nah, nah I need bag. my couple of dollars. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Because sure. it's like that's the separation. I got to learn because all, all my babies could come up to the show. Nah, at some point you got to, when you start elevating, you got to, you got to know what artists to bring up. That's what like, we kind of mm-hmm. going through too mm-hmm. in that, in that thing where it's mm-hmm. like when you first start, anybody, oh, you yeah, talk, yeah. have a seat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> do people pull you like so many people be in my DMs? Oh, I want to manage you. I could, I could do this for you. I could take you here. I could, cause I went to Zeus too. Oh, really? I was on the baddies auditions. I was showing my titties, too. Oh, my God. They thought they was going to be showing their titties. Uh -uh. (laughs) Uh-uh. I had this cougar up in there. And I made it to the last, to the big round with um, Black China Mom was there, like, the last round with Natalie Nunn. I made it. I took my mic. I had one titty out. And I said, (laughs) I'm the motherfucking drill fairy. And they kept saying, come closer, come closer. I just knew I was going to be on that shit. They don't don't know them. They don't even know the vibes that they missing right now. Yeah, they don't. They got you on this show because I I did know the vibes. (laughs) I really, but you know, everything is not for everybody. And And I said to myself, even if I don't make it, it's a reason. And that's just something that I could, Cause my thing too, ultimately, I try to teach older women, not teach them, but I try to show them that it's okay to be you. Yeah. It's okay to be able to blend in with older and younger. It's yeah. okay. Yeah. Fucking 90 year old women is on TikTok with millions of views and streams. Yeah. And why can't you? You have yeah. to feel good about yourself. It's okay to see younger guys talking to you and trying yeah. to get at you. That should make you feel good. Yeah. You know, yeah. a lot of women is not aging like that no more. Mm-hmm. So you got to love yourself and and it's okay. But some of them be like, girl, I'm 58 and I like this 23 year old. And I'm like, Mm, that's just for fun, girl. (laughs) That's just for fun. (laughs) <laughs> that is just I'll just be sitting there like <laughs> I, get, I get that The DMs The advice <laughs> And that's where the Well I, I, We they, don't get as much as that Cause you know We're not women So they don't really wanna have And it's what I say you know I talk man? dirty and, Yeah and you talk dirty Cause with the How that started Well I always been talking to, I always been a little Dirty talker mm-hmm. But um <laughs> It started <Good> Body mouth <laughs> <laughs> I'm bringing these artists up Yeah they're young artists. They fucking on. They was just on another show talking about the ops. Yeah. But I don't want to do that. Yeah. I don't want to talk about the violence on my show. Yeah. So what can I talk about? They younger. We are gonna talk about sex. Mm. We are gonna talk about the crushes. We are gonna talk about sex. We are gonna talk about your experiences. We are gonna talk about love. We are gonna talk about things that you want to do. So my show is not like an interview. Yeah. We j- it's a conversation. Yeah, I like, you know why I like it? Because they be uncomfortable when you be asking them that yeah, shit. Yeah, I be like, so, like, did you eat ass yesterday? <laughs> they be like, huh? <laughs> and I, huh? I, I, they just be like, and I, right? It could be just one. It could be, we, we could be talking about something totally different. Yeah. But I think that's the beauty of, of who I am. Yeah. You going to get, I'm going to say what I want to say. They like, my son is like, mom, but no, I go on a blind dates with the young kids and everything. Oh, and it's not that I not want the them. the ones where they be in the car blind. Yeah, oh, oh, I'm on God. one. Kassanet. You was on Kassanet? The one, you know them? The, I know Kassanet. Talil. I don't know. I know Kassanet. I, He's I know in the people. house with them. He's oh, the yeah, light-skinned yeah, one. I, yeah, 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 yeah. I went with him and, no, nah, I didn't go with him. We went in the car together. Let's get that straight. Yeah. It was a really good um, blind date, though. We, he actually really is an, a nice kid. It wasn't nothing raunchy and yeah. stuff. I do it for the content, and then, then I do it for the younger kids to show them that you got older people that care about y'all. Yeah. 
Yeah. Look, I'm, I'm, look what I'm doing yeah. to show you that I fuck with y'all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just meet me halfway. Mm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's dope. So I, it, it's not that I want to be in a young nigga's faces yeah, yeah. because these young guys, they really respectful. Yeah. But when I didn't know who he was, so when I got out the car, the young boys was like, yo, that's Talil. All the kids came up to him. I was like, I was on a date with a celebrity. celebrity. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and they're so helpful. And that's a, that's, a, that's a connect that I got. So if I need help with something, mm. I know I could always. Yeah. You got to still treat the, the younger kids with respect to mm. if you want absolutely. the respect. Yeah, you know absolutely. Yeah. But then I started meeting the porn girls. I don't know. For some strange reason. My mother always told me, everybody want to come to you and talk to you. Because I'm, pl- I I yeah. I'm a kind person. I started talking to the prostitutes in Brooklyn on oh a, in, in East New York on Cozine. <laughs> you know, you that one, you probably was that one kid where you just get your ass out. Of I, sometimes my kids be like, "Ma, I don't even want to go to the store. You gonna stop and talk to everybody?" Me, I don't do the promoting. I don't know how to fucking pay the five dollars and promote your shit on Instagram. When I'm on a train, I be like, "Excuse me, everybody." I, I'm dead ass serious. Oh my god! Uh, I got videos of people sending me videos like, "Is this one you on the train?" Like, yeah. <laughs> I be like, follow me on Instagram. Y'all, the older niggas can follow me and the younger niggas can follow me. I'm funny as fuck. <laughs> Subscribe to my YouTube too. I can't get paid. <laughs> but I do that. Yeah. Because I'm not scared to take the train. If something's going to happen, it's going to happen. Yeah. I'm not going to live my life sitting on the train like, oh my God, oh my God. I'm going to live and do yeah. what I want to do. Absolutely. I was in a 16 year marriage I just came out of. My mother passed away. I got shit going on in my life and nothing can stop me no more. Yeah, and that's and just how I think I'm free I'm gonna talk my shit I'm gonna do and I'm gonna still be a good mom to my kids the way I know how to fuck yeah. what society say fuck what the therapist say yeah. fuck what the nutritionist say I'm gonna give my son whatever he want Yeah, it's on my terms mm-hmm. I'm, I, I've am i been living off of everybody I've been pleasing people my whole life that it irritated me that yeah. I hated myself for saying yes mm. or no and now it's no bitch goodbye mm. That's 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 crazy. Where do you think that came from? I was always extra nice, and um, I, I just always been like that. My mom mm. was like that. Like my mom used to come home literally with bums, literally with homeless people. Give them a shower, have the um the barber come, cut their hair, give them a meal, and let them stay. One of them stayed for weeks, rent in a room, but he she got him a job. My mother. Always been like that. Her fucking door was open while she played cards and fried chicken. That's how we lived growing up. Wow. She was one of the moms that ran the number holes. So she was meeting people every day. Mm. She was playing susu. She was doing all that stuff. Oh, this is Mad Dog Mama. This is Mad Dog. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just my mother. Mad Dog, Mad dog is coming. <laughs> <laughs> Mad, Mad Dog does have a heart though, so she got in my heart was like go like my mom is I'm my mother just in a newer version. That's mm. it. Cause ain't nobody coming up in my motherfucking house now. Oh, they yeah, don't you ain't work like no that. Bum. <laughs> I ain't watching no bumps now. We ain't doing that. I don't know. But I, I'm there for anybody and it's just like the prostitutes. I used to see them. Them bitches, they, they, they bad. They look good. These new prostitutes, I don't know where they came from. But <laughs> they need to, look, they, they bodies done. But I started, that's when I was driving, I started asking them if they was all right. It's hot. Yeah. Well, they naked. I know they all right, but we just started talking. Mm. So every Sunday, I would take condoms and waters to them. Oh, to the wow. one. Yeah. Like, I, I was talking to them, like, like you don't got to do this. And they like, yeah, we know, but we getting paid. Remember, the yeah. baddest ones get all the customers. Oh, mm-hmm. absolutely. Mm-hmm. And they're not on drugs. And then I started realizing, like, these girls really be worth something. Like, they, yeah. you know what I'm saying? They not like that. Like, they got a plan. They want to be here. Mm-hmm. It's not like, it's not all. So I'm like, mm, let yeah. me start interviewing. Yeah. But I always was into porn. But I just, that's what I want to do. I want to interview porn stars. I, like, Vanessa Del Rio is one of my favorite Porn. Oh, slow down, man. Right. Look at the man right. sweating all that. You know, I like, I, I, I really, the legends, even Pinky, the Roxy Reynolds, like, yeah. that's the girls that Roxy, I remember. Baby. It was like, damn, you know, your little crush is in jail. They got pictures of this, of these girls yeah. on the, and, and they, they, they save lives and niggas don't realize that yeah. because sometimes women are men sanity. 
Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Shit. So they're watching these pictures on a the wall. They're not. They're they're keeping it. They're keeping it sane. Yeah. How many how many niggas in jail that don't get a chance to do that? They sexually frustrated. They are men. They human beings. Yeah. So I I always looked at it like these adult entertainers and these video girls and these whoever they are. They saving these nigga, niggas lives. Some of them. Yeah. 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 Well, keeping them sane. It sounds Word. funny, but That's a that fact. and I'll say it, it's saving other people from getting raped in there. That's what I'm saying, buddy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. Word. Word. Yeah. Oh. For real. Yeah. <laughs> you means you get to see something, you know Word. what I'm saying? You interviewed somebody, man, I, and I, it, I thought it was a very interesting conversation um, with Lethal Lips. Ugh, Lethal. I wanted you to be a little down. nastier. C- c- calm down, man. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm messing with you. I'm messing I with l- you. You can go I love her. I've been following her from Twitter before all the Instagram stuff, right? Look. Yo, he's crazy um, right now. What, I really, what really impressed me was that Sub Zero video, but that 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 green gobbler. She, I call her the green gobbler. She was, explain that for the people who don't know. She she put an eighteen inch dildo down her throat. That's when she got noticed for TV. But she's she was dancing and stuff for a while before mm. that. She she put a 18, 18 inches. That's a lot. She's the goat throat. She is the, the goat. goat throat. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna give her that. If you got 18 wow. inches, I don't she even know. She went viral for that. Yeah, you wow. can literally see it, bro. Green. We see. And I she's think... just taking it, taking it. I mean, she has a wide mouth. I, I would think so. <laughs> uh, but you know, um, she. I respect her grind because Lethal Lips, people don't know. She does hair. She not do makeup. She not to do nails. She had her own salons before. She done ran through a couple of dollars. She she's yeah, seen a piece yeah. a piece of money. You know, she's a, a mom. It's a lot of stuff that people don't know. But I did want her to demonstrate on a couple of Lethal. We gotta get that interview number yeah, two. Yeah, for real, number two. But you know what I think of, I, I respect sex workers because it's 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 a it's I don't want to just say it's a job, but it's still still a profession and you still have to be professional in that business and you still have to carry yourself and conduct yourself in a certain manner because people just think you could just walk up and just have sex and it's like, I don't think it goes that simple. You know what I'm saying? If you want to be a star, you got to, you know what I'm saying? You got to right. have a certain level of professionalism. Corinne Steffens, very professional. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Superhead, very professional. Yeah. yeah. Yep. It's also a dangerous job too. It's dangerous. It's very yeah. dangerous. Um, you don't know who you're meeting, janky promoters, j- fucked up managers. Yeah. You on camera, you don't know what, what that film, where's that film going? Word. It's so much, it's like, ugh. You don't know who to trust. Word. You ever thought about shit. doing that? Because you yeah. was talking crazy no, on there, I, I, I've wanted to do porn before, like. What kind of porn? Soft or hard porn? Because it's different. Yeah. Hard. Not not HBO porn, okay? <laughs> not HBO porn. Put the hand in the way right now. Wait, wait, you don't see nothing. Nah. You just hear this <laughs> fake ass <laughs> moaning. No. But I, I I had chances to this day. Well, I'm, I'm sure. The me. only, what is it, OnlyFans? Yeah. Yeah, um, I guess. That's- I know a couple of little young porn niggas that's got billions of streams. That's fucking rich. Hmm. That came from the projects. Hmm. But... They, they asked me to be on a reality show, not yeah. the, a porn. What made you want to do that though? I like sex. Like I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm like, I love being sexual. Mm-hmm. I think being free is it's okay to be free. It's okay yeah. to be who you yeah. are. Like it should be boundaries, but it shouldn't be no boundaries of who you love yeah. and how you want to show it. Mm-hmm. If you love yourself and you want to show it, show it. It just gotta be a an appropriate timing. Like that's where, like you yeah, said. Yeah. That's why the the strippers and to me the bartenders had beef. I what, me, why? I always felt like the bartenders was a little bit more conservative and stuff like that. Yeah. People try to th- bring it as a gen- um a race, only the Spanish girls and stuff like that. I just think that come on, a lot of the strippers, even that I know, they're not as what robust or pretty? No, they're not as like um, conservative as oh. as a lot of the bar the bottle service and bartenders that so I. It's a little more to imagination, right? You know, when you're a stripper, you, that shit is in your face, and so you kind of. I got. I just got offered. Somebody asked me to do blowjobs. 
Because I kept talking about the glory hole. With the, with the, yeah. It was a 20 year old, and I was trying to see where his mom was. So I was like, <laughs> what, what do you think about would you do porn? He's like, yeah, but nobody got, I got to put, I'm like, you want to put a paper bag over your head? Da, da, da. I was like, so won't you do the glory hole? That's what I, 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 I heard is popular now. <laughs> So once I said that or whatever, a couple of little um, like OnlyFans or some shit. They was reaching out. Yeah, it was reaching out. Oh my! They, they God. was they was they was talking fifty k. Oh, they was throwing the bag at you. Yeah, they was. Actually, throwing... had you really considering? They, it did, but just, I just <laughs> see my two light, no. my two light skin ass kids, <laughs> kids faces in my head. Yeah. And my have been like, oh, that's the drill fairy. Oh shit! Because <laughs> look, I have. Tattoos. Yeah, it's like it's. I had to think about that, yeah. and I'm like, damn. They're like, cause you always talk about giving head. I think that's the best part of sex. I'm sorry. I know it's men in here, but I'm just being. I honest. mean, what you think? Don't say that. Sorry, <laughs> don't say that. No, no, I'm just saying. Um, cause it, I just feel like that's like when I when I watch porn, that's what I go to. Oh, you. Like to give oh, head search you didn't hear yeah. that? You didn't fucking hear what she said. The search, I, 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 the search I, I, engine. I thought the she was saying engine, kids I said just, that head is the best thing. I f- yeah, I feel like if I was doing it, none of these bitches I would would even be competition to me. Let me get oh. that clear, Ooh. gang. Nah, <laughs> <laughs> that was a close up. <laughs> yeah. um, oh my god! Everybody knows I talk like this, and you know, every so often I always ask ask my kids, "Are y'all okay?" Because I know they're gonna see it somewhere. What's your safe word? <laughs> <laughs> my son, my son just be like, "Tone it down. Make, make it for adults." <laughs> but I, I, I don't know. I, I, I even thought about directing one. That would be dope. Yeah, that's like, crazy. I thought so, about acting too. So, you want to be too? in one? Hell yeah! Yeah, since you, the, uh, <laughs> you ain't in one yet. Not even, not <laughs> you not even on the homemade not one. Because no, 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 no. Lord, I always said to myself, if my ex wanted to really get me lit, baby, put that video out. Oh my god! I would be lit. Oh, you got a, vi- you got a video. I got a couple. No, nah, I'm, I'm saying I, I, like, I, don't I said it. my ex. No, I said <laughs> if my ex wanted to yeah. put it out, I probably that shit probably would go viral. But I, I don't think you leave people in with bad taste in their mouth. So I don't think they would do that. No, no, he know better. Unless we split that bag, he gonna be like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. But I wouldn't do that. I would want to start over fresh, and mm-hmm. and then I, I don't know. Like I just feel like it needs to be more older women doing. Like, that's what I said, doing sexual stuff. I, I just feel like, stop letting these young bitches win. Get up and do something. You know how many bad older women I see? Yeah. That's older than me? Mm. It's like, stop letting these young girls show y'all out. <laughs> Get up and do something. Put that thing to work. Put it to work. It still works. Put that thing to work, girl. It still works. Put it to work. I had a young nigga, I had a young guy tell me he was 26, and he was fucking a 52-year-old woman, and it was like, he never had a feeling like that. But me, when I was young growing up, once you pass 40, we heard that thing drop. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just growing up. Yeah, As young you girls growing up, we was like, we heard older women need KY jelly. And yeah. if they don't, once they go through menopause, they don't get wet anymore. That's what we was taught growing up. Mm-hmm. Look, you like, hell no. Um so now it's like, okay, I'm one, I'm getting to one of them, yeah, be yeah. one of them older women. 40 the new 20 now. 43. 40's the new 30. What is it? 30's the new 20? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, fuck that. That's what I'm, <laughs> I'm claiming that. <laughs> so eventually my show is going to take off and I'm going to have different, like I want midgets up there. That's what oh, the fuck I'm, yeah, that's his shit. Talking. That's his thing. That's what you I want. want that Richard talking. Bay feeling. I want that <laughs> Richard <laughs> Bay. Where do they find these people? <laughs> Yo, I, I want to be on that business, show. Yo, you that's some corny yeah. shit. Every, <laughs> everybody <laughs> say, who are you like? Yo, that men just make me laugh. Yeah. <laughs> I just... Little people make <laughs> you Or do like a blind little date people, with a midget. Right. I, I want to be political correct. Little people. Little people. Make me laugh. Yeah. I, you see, I just posted that. Like, yeah. I've been going through this thing oh, yeah, where it's only you. short men is talking to me. It's like every guy I meet is short. Because I'm single. Do you so, want a relationship? You was in, in no. a relationship. I was about to say sixteen years. I I've been single for two years, and I'm I'm fine. I'm fine with just dealing with one person and not even having a fucking. What do you call them? 
a label. Oh, oh, one of them situations. Like I, I feel like I can very well be with someone for a long time, and we don't even have a label. We just do us, yeah. and and it is what it is. Relationships are complicated, and you have to really do soul searching if you want a relationship to work. Like I realized that. Mm-mm. So what was that relation? You, you sixteen years, like two kids, sixteen years. I got married in two thousand and six, and it was just one of them. Was it a happy marriage? No, it, no, no. But 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 oh. but it was love. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not gonna sit here and bash the marriage. It was love, but it was toxic. He was young, a little younger than me. Cause he's forty. Um, he come from broke, broken home, never fixed. Yeah. I was dealing with fighting my demons, never fixed. Mm. We just had a never fixed fucking relationship when it started, and we had two kids. We lived together because nobody wanted to say goodbye first. At the end, we all, he's cheating, I'm cheating. We're just fucking having a big old cheating family. Oh my god! Coming home knowing that we cheating, yeah. it just got to the point. Well, all right, you ready to fuck? All right, let's just fuck, just so we could just still say we got something. Mm. But Alex. eventually, right, eventually um, he he was dealing with somebody while he was home. Yeah. And he's with her now. And that's fine. That's him. Yeah, yeah. But me, I had to get, I had to really find myself and I had to love myself because mm. I didn't love myself. Every relationship I ever been in was, was fucked up. Like, I ain't even going to hold you. Yeah. And it has nothing to do with it being him or me. It's just, it's me for me. I, yeah. I don't care about what he got to fix. It's yeah. what I got to fix. Yeah. And before I could ever give another man my all, I have to make sure that I give myself my all first. Yeah. And that's it. And I love it. And the young niggas love it too. And the older niggas love it too. And I love it because it's it, it is about um, self-actualization. It's about you. You can't be your best self if you haven't, mastered yourself how you gonna be in a relationship you got shit that you haven't overcome and then you want to be with this person and then y'all come make this big old pot of uncooked mess that nobody's you know trusting nobody yeah, yeah. he's but, not but trusting at the same me. time you could you could learn with somebody and too. I, I was you about can. to say yeah, that too that, that, that definitely can be yeah. things too so it depends on the person yeah. it was the cheating that mm-hmm. was the most um for both of us on his part and on mine. Yeah. And it was my trust. You gotta you gotta remember I had trust issues from young. Yeah. Even even um more personal, I talk about it now, me being sexually molested by mm. my sister's ex husband. Mm. And I just found that bitch on Facebook too and on Instagram. I got something for him. But anyway, yeah. I could talk about it now. Yeah. So I went through that from the age of seven to twelve. Mm. Wow. Do you think that was a part of of how you feel about sex right, like right now? You think I that think, was a part yeah, of that? It it is. Because most people, I think that goes through that type of. It's either scars you or it makes you more active. It made me more active growing up, but now as an adult, I like I said, I got over a lot of stuff, yeah. and it now I'm I control it, of course. Like mm-hmm. oh, now um, it's you. Yeah, that you was me, man, like, and t- I took all of that shit, but I don't even be having sex like that. Mm, now. Mm. And um not that I don't want to, but when you when you when some when Trust. you go through it, when you go through trauma, especially with with females go through trauma, males go through it too, mm. but sexual trauma it's it's scary. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a fact. So it's like it's either we're going to have sex and I'm going to feel like that's it. We love each other, we're together forever. That's mm. it. Da, 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 da. You can't feel like that about every man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's it, it's just not gonna work, and that happened to me. And I think that's a, a part of the reason why I was the way I was growing up. I was fast. Yeah. Everybody was everybody was my boyfriend. <laughs> I mm. mean, like it's it's, <laughs> it's, it's, just, uh, it's real. Yeah, I mean, it's real. But, but you ain't the only one who goes yeah. through that. Right. You know what and, I'm saying? And it's okay. But as this is why you need time for yourself, and you need time to heal. And it's an embarrassing thing at that moment. So you kind of don't want to talk to nobody and you mm-hmm. it took me as an I, I became an adult when I told my family mm. and how did they react did they even accept it because you know sometimes my mother believed me 
but she, it's like nobody wanted to believe me. Not that they mm. did. My sister believed me. Okay. Oh, my sister, her uh, that was this her. Is the ex-sister. Gucci sister. No, that's the one in California. Oh, so that was happening to me in California too. Oh man! Wow. And it's like when you're put in a situation and you know a family member, like my sister loved him. That mm. broke me. Cause I was scared to say something. Cause I'm like, I love my sister, yeah. and if she, and if I tell her she loves him, she might not love me no more, or she might not believe me, or mm. I might crush uh, her. Or mm. I don't want to hurt her. She, my wow. sister was in love with her, her ex husband. <sighs> he brainwashed her. He manipulated her. I wouldn't be surprised if he met her at a younger age. And they were both young, um, but he had issues. Yeah, and. It's fucked up that his family knew and nobody didn't even say nothing. I think that that was wrong on their behalf. They knew about you? Mm -mm. They knew knew that that he was was a fucking weirdo. Like, Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I wasn't the only person. Oh, my God. And you know what's fucked up? He has daughters now. All girls. Mm -hmm. Jesus. You know? But I think all of that play a part in why I am the way I am. Cause I used to be funny to mask my pain. That's mm. where the funny, the funny person. And I used to be three hundred and nineteen pounds. To be honest, to tell you that wow, too. Where? And this was th- we. This was two years. I fucking lost weight. I didn't get no gastric surgery. I started loving myself more. Like, wow, but you don't even look like yeah, you used to be. Exactly. Because I lost yeah. the weight, the way I'm supposed to, eating yeah. healthy, going to the gym, and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I'm one fifty now. One fifty three. Wow. That's crazy. Round of applause. That's a fact. Round of applause. Round of applause for that. Round of applause for just living through that trauma and just being able to smile. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I I go through it. I still go through stuff and and now, but it's like if if I don't smile, who who's gonna help the world? Mm. If I don't, if I don't, I. Whatever I go through, I go through, but I don't never want to see nobody I'm trying to help see me like this. They cannot. Mm-hmm. Like, that's why mm-hmm. with my kids, I used to cry a lot. And by my son's expressions, especially the two little ones, because I also have an 11 year old mm-hmm. who want to be a pastor. Oh, that's good. Yeah, he that's wanted to be good. a pastor. So you have four kids? I have four yeah, boys. Oh. My mother, both my moms have four girls, and I got oh, four wow. boys. Mm. Oh no! Oh wow! <laughs> Can't stand them. Nah, I love them. My boys, my boys are my everything. Yeah, that, they just no. They, you strong to raise four boys though. And I have four C sections. Really? So I had my first C section at fifteen. That's traumatizing mentally. Wow. Mm. That's traumatizing mentally. Oof. You got to heal. Oh my god! Wow. Four. Oof. Wow. And this is why I be telling people like I struggle when I go through real life shit every day right now like. Nothing is perfect in my household, but I know one day I'll see better days. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Somebody gonna see me. You live in better days now. And you, sign it, me. It's hard to see. Because <laughs> I'm not showing that. We yeah. can't, I can't, I can't help nobody if I'm not, if I'm not help. I'm, I'm still not help, but I'm honest with niggas. No, I mean, you, you know live in better saying? days. Yeah. But it's hard to see it when you're in the moment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm like that where somebody will be like, oh, you, you're dope. And I'm like, I, I shy away from that because I'm I'm like I ain't even where I want to be at yet. That's that's me. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm just working. I don't really care about all that. I just want to work and accomplish and create art and tell stories that just are nuanced and put black people in a dope and make people realize black people are not monolithic. That's you know what I'm saying. Man. Even if from this this breakup and just getting to just being by myself, I started going deeper and and, and learning more stuff and mm. reading about who I am yeah. and about being black is so beautiful and I, you know like I went through my phase where I wanted to be Spanish and I wanted to be you know mm. a lot of girls go through that it's yeah. like, you know and it's just like girl I wish I was your complexion yeah I love I just feel especially being who you are just. Yeah. That's why being liberated is everything to me. Yeah. Like, you know. Well, you got anything? I'm I'm just appreciative. You came and gave For your story. Real. Your story was dope. It's yeah, like you're, dope. Dope. Oh, you're dope. You're yeah. dope. Yeah. You're really Thank dope. You. Really dope. And, and and just keep doing what you're doing with yourself and your journey in life and just I'm just proud of you for turning yourself around from what you went right. through. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's that's real yeah. dope. 
Yeah, and, it's like. And thanks for coming through no, and telling thank the story. You. This is this is a really good vibe. Like I love this interview. It's, oh, we doing a round of applause already. I was about to get. Oh no, from, yeah. Prime, you got anything? Oh no, I, lo- I just love the story and yeah, the most see. best part of it is you know how to take accountability. Like you don't really have a lot of women that say it wasn't just him. Mm. Nah, I played it, it, a big it, part. Yeah, it's really rare. And out of everything, that was the most attractive part about you. Mm. It wasn't even about the, the oh, I did this. So I, that right there is knowing that I played a part was like the best. Yeah. So yeah. hearing that is pretty dope. Oh, gee, yeah. you got anything? Really the, the mention of uh, Vanessa Durell got me. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm never sure. Another thing I do oh is when God. I go to um, shows, like this is mine. Yes. Like I like, I love merch and I love, I want to do, I want to start my own line too, my clothes. Because I'm tall. I want to start a clothing line for tall women. Mm-hmm. Because like I'm tired of fucking covering up my ankles. Oh my God. I want one of them shirts, man. I, yes, I, 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 I I'm going to get some merch to you. I'm really trying. Like, I'm doing everything. I want to do acting. I want to, like I said, I want to show like Richard Bay. I want to get out here to these jails and go talk to these kids and just try to be a part of the community. Mm-hmm. It's so much I want to do. I, I, I just don't want you showing your titties on um, bad girls no more. That's it. No, I said this no not for me. It was a dope. A, a dope vibe. Yeah, I met yeah, some dope yeah. people, don't but that. now if loving bass, if loving hip hop, call me. That's different because yeah, that's different. That's music. Different. Yeah, yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's, it's a life. They purporting a lifestyle outside of that. They gonna see me though. Uh, they should. Shit. Man. <laughs> they should. I'm. Just, you know. I'm just thankful that you came. Thank you. I'm glad you that you opened up and you told your story, and we appreciate that. Aww. And we don't ever want that to be taken for granted. You are welcome to come back anytime because I feel like we got a little bit more to get on. And if you want us on your show, I mean, we're not drill rappers, but no, you know come what I'm up saying? because uh, we'll definitely come on there. This is dope. I, I don't know if I'll be speaking too crazy. <laughs> you no, because I know you're gonna try to hit me with one of those. <laughs> <laughs> but, I cooked uh, too on the side. I don't know if I mentioned that. You didn't not mention that. Oh, you should have brought I some food in here, man. I cooked. We would have gave you, you know what I'm saying? Your catering fees. No. <laughs> if y'all ever have something, this is this is serious. I'm yeah. gonna send you all my stuff so okay. you'll see. I used to cook on the show in the beginning, but it became expensive. And then you get artists that say they coming and they don't come. And oh, I've God. been through it all, yeah, yeah, so it's yeah. like now I'm like, um, yeah, nah, I gotta got know it. that, yeah. you know. But I I do cater and I cook for a lot of artists on the side. Mm-hmm. I, I don't just I don't cook like um chicken alfredo and stuff. I cook like cabbage, uh, smoked turkey wings, black eyed peas, stuff like that. Yeah, you know do curry chicken. You curry chicken. I know how to cook oxtails, rice and peas, everything. Yeah, that's what I want. I'm you a cook. Got some Caribbean in you, so you you yeah. can't not. Be Caribbean and not know how to cook that. <laughs> That's shit. a fact. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All right, I'm going to give you a round of applause because you, you're just fact. on the fucking dope. Yo, this is the Thanks for Asking show. It's my man. This is me, Detox, Bug Out Prime. We got the OG over there. We got Kelly G of the Drill Factory. <laughs> Drill Factory. Drill Ferry. <laughs> the Kelly G of the Drill Ferry. We out. Peace. Peace.